I'm Chris Cook. I'm Canadian representative for the Finn class at the 2008 Olympic Games. I started sailing when I was quite young. My mom put me in sailing school and um, I don't remember exactly when. I was maybe uh, seven or eight years old. And she did it to make sure that I had something to do in the summertime. And little did she know that it was going to cost her this much money uh, along the way. <laughs> she, she really did uh, support a lot of what I did. Um, and, and so she, she picked sailing school for me, and it was just, it was a natural fit. I'm Ben Remaker from uh, Vancouver, Canada, and I sail the 49er with Gordon Cook. Gordos, we've been teammates now since 2003. We work hard, we train hard, we both believe in that. Um, you know, neither of us has to, you know, ask the other guy to work harder. He works hard all the time. It's like we're married almost, the amount of time we spend together. Especially back in the years when we were really broke. And <laughs> didn't get to fly home ever, we just stayed in locations and trained when everyone else flew home to their families or whatever it is that else they did. Hi, I'm Lisa Ross and I sail the Laser Radio. I started sailing when I was eight years old um, at the Lunenburg Yacht Club in Nova Scotia and my brother started taking sailing lessons with his friends and of course when he took sailing lessons I wanted to take sailing lessons so that's kind of how I got started and then after that I spent every single summer of my childhood, basically, at the Yacht Club. I'm Nicola Gerke, and I sail the RSX Windsurfer. I started sailing when I was nine years old at summer sailing camp, and I loved it. So I started racing at, at 12, and went throughout all the steps in Canada, and went to the National Youth Championships for several years, and went to the Youth Worlds. And in high school, that was when I decided, or that was when I dreamt about going to the Olympics. So really, I wanted to go to Sydney 2000 but then I stopped sailing for six years and started windsurfing so um, Sydney fell out but then I joined the 470 team with Jen Provan for 2004. We made the Olympic team and I guess that's when I got hooked and got the bug. Hi I'm Oscar Johansson, I'm a member of the Canadian sailing team. Hi my name is Kevin Stittle and I sail the Olympic Tornado. You know going into my world championships my Olympic qualifier and world championships. I was thinking a little bit about it, you know, I've given up three years of my, three and a half years of my life to get to this point. If I have a good regatta, you know, I go to the Olympics. If I have a bad event, my sailing career is done. And it, you realize that, well, this, this cycle is over. It's a lot of time. I'm 225 days a year on the road. One thing that Kevin and I have proud ourselves on is we train more than our competitors. Yeah, we, we typically put in pretty long days, longer than we would like to, but uh, yeah, a typical day we'll, we'll start at 9 and uh, you know, finish. I end with a gym session or with a, a debrief, and sometimes it can go on as late as uh, you know, 10, 11 at night. And, um, but we try to keep it around 12 hour days. Hi, I'm Jen Proban. I'm the helm of the Canadian Olympic Gingling. Hi, I'm Martha Henderson. I'm the middle of the Gingling. Hi, I'm Katie Abbott, and I'm on the bow. You know, the best thing about the Olympics, I think, is finally, you know, it's your brigade to put it all together. Sure, there's a t like, you know, people say there's a lot of pressure on, but it's the excitement of it, you know, like working on the little things leading up and then, you know, putting it all together at the, at the event and just sailing like, the best event that you can. You know, one of the other sailors said a lot of the um, importance going into a games like this is momentum, and we feel like we've got a lot of momentum going in, so we're, yeah. we're excited about the opportunities that we were presented with, so it's good. Uh, I qualified in uh, 2007 um, for, the, for the Canadian sailing team, which was it was a, a make or break for me. It was uh, I've been sailing with the help of my, of my mom and um, and whatever money I could make with uh, teaching sailing, and so I knew I had to either get on the team that year or I had to or I had to quit sailing and go to school and. A job and all those things, so it was it was a lot of pressure on me to to actually get on the team that year, um, and so I got on the team for 2008. You have this quest to be perfect in every uh, aspect of your campaign at the Olympics, so that involves testing all the different bits of equipment that were allowed to have any say over, buying new boats. Uh, there's a few considerations because we're expecting to have very little wind in China. So we um, have moved our training venues to locations likely to have less wind so that we can practice in less wind. 
In 2000, the spring of 2005, after the Olympics, they made the decision that the radio was going to be the women's single-handed class in November 2004. And um, so I made the decision, one, that I wanted to go back to the Olympics and be a medal contender. And just based on commitment levels of the girls that I was sailing with before, um, plus the fact that I love sailing the radio, I made the decision to switch classes. To get to the Olympics, the training's been quite time-consuming, I guess. Um, a lot of time spent on the water. I've, since starting the RSX, I've had to start the class from scratch, so I've not only had to learn the technique of the RSX, but actually learn the technique of windsurfing in general and try to catch up on all the other girls that have been windsurfing for up to 20 years, some of the girls that I compete against. So. Um, definitely the board handling, the tactical strategical part, and then the physical part is unbelievably hard. Um, you have to go to the gym and do all the cardio, and it's, um, it's quite a physical sport. We had an excellent world. Um, it was a little interesting because we did better than we actually expected, and uh, we finished second at the Worlds, and, and I mean it's almost two dream goals in one. Um, a podium at a world and, and qualifying for the Olympics, so it's still taking a while to digest really what's what went on there and, and realize that what's happening. If somebody comes along that, that is better than me and qualifies to go to the next games, then, then that's great and I'm going to do everything I can to actually help nurture that um, in the Finn class. I'm working with two guys right now uh, to bring along behind me. I, I want Canadian sailing specifically Canadian fin class to succeed and carry on the legacy of, of greatness because there, there is greatness in Canadian fin sailing. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to continue to work with these guys and do some coaching, um, share ideas that I have with the Canadian Yachting Association, uh, with the foundation, with basically anybody that'll listen. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is, but we haven't plateaued ever. We've all we've been on a straight slope up since we started. 55th in the world, 49th to 42nd to 19th to 13th. So I guess we just, we've stuck to our routine of always basically working. We've got no distractions in our lives. We've got no homes, we've got no <laughs> anything. So we just always work on sailing and hopefully that's more than our competitors can do. I want to bring home a medal for Canada. Um, the World Championships, my strongest races and the races where I was you know, top three, top five, top ten, we're all in the lighter air with current, so that's the condition that we expect at the Olympics, and I've been focusing a lot on that. And, uh, yeah, so I want to be up in that top group. Absolutely, I'm excited about going to the Olympics. Um, it's really neat that I actually was able to fulfill my goal of switching sports and, and making the Olympic team in a different sport, and it just goes to show that if you put your mind to it, and train really hard and you can do it. Well, um, our fleet is 16 boats and um, you know, out of them I would say 13, 14 of them could all potentially be in the top three. They could all win a medal. Um, and even at that, you can't count anyone out. You have very few times in your life where you have the opportunity to go in as prepared as you can be and race against the world and test your abilities. And that opportunity is is one of the wonderful things about being an Olympic athlete. We're expecting a battle and we, we're there to fight and we're there to, to do well. We were offered one of the um, spots to fill the, the quotas. So when that came through, we were so excited. Um, we knew that there was a chance for that to come through. Uh, so we were sort of waiting on pins and needles and continued our training as much as we could. So when it did come through, uh, we just went full on and put the boat in container in China and went to as many regattas as we could and did our micro campaign and it's yeah. it's rocking. <laughs> I, think, I think in the end, um, after Miami, we none of us gave up hope. I mean, we all kept training and doing things. We kept in touch and once we got the spot, um, we got it and we have it and I think we haven't looked back and we've worked really hard since then. So the long and the short of it is we're going to the games and we're going with steam and we're going to give it everything we have. And um, I don't think there could be a more excited team and uh, it's going to be a great time. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs>